we will now look at integer representations, which is going to be basically be converting between different bases. So if b is an integer greater than 1, and n is a positive integer, we can express it uniquely in the form a k b to the k, a to the k minus 1 b to the k minus 1, all the way up to a 1 b, and this should be just a 0. Looks like it got typed wrong. So k is a non-negative integer, and a 0 through a k are non-negative integers less than b. So when we're dealing with base 10, this is fairly easy. So for instance, 186,392 is 1 times 10 to the 5th, plus 8 times 10 to the 4th, plus 6 times 10 cubed, plus 3 times 10 squared, plus 9 times 10, plus 2. This comes from basic place value. The 2 is in the 1's place, so we multiply by 1. The 9 is in the 10's place, so we multiply by 10. We then have the hundreds, the thousandths, the ten thousandths, and the hundred thousandths. So we multiply by the place value. So for example, if I have a binary number given here, and I want to find the decimal expansion, I raise to increasing powers of 2. So I have 2 to the 8th, plus 0 times 2 set to the 7th, plus 0 times 2 to the 6th, plus 1 times 2 to the 5th, plus 1 times 2 to the 4th, and that puts us here. 1 times 2 cubed, 0 times 2 squared, 1 times 2, and then the last one is just plus 1. What about an octal expansion? So I have 5 times 8 cubed, plus 1 times 8 squared, plus 0 times 8, plus 4. For hexadecimal, which is base 16, we need 16 different digits. So we have the number 0 through 9, that's our first 10, and we have A through F. So A is going to be equivalent to 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, and F is 15. So what's the decimal expansion of this number? Well, this is in the ones place. This is 16, 16 squared, 16 cubed, so the last one is 16 to the fourth. So 9 times 16 to the fourth, A is equivalent to 10, so 10 times 16 cubed, plus 2 times 16 squared, plus 7 times 16, and then plus E which is 14. Let's now look at moving between bases. So if I start with an integer n that's in base 10, and I want to move to base b, I'm going to divide n by b and obtain a quotient and a remainder. And the remainder is the rightmost digit in our expansion. We're then going to take our quotient that we got and divide that by b or and divide q0 by b. And this is the second digit, and we're going to basically continue this until we get a quotient of 0. So for example, I want to find the binary version of 35. So I start with dividing 35 by 2. I get 17 with a remainder of 1. I'll now do 17 divided by 2, which is 8 with a remainder of 1. 8 divided by 2 is 4 with a remainder of 0. 4 divided by 2 is 2 with a remainder of 0. 2 divided by 2 is 1 with a remainder of 0. And 1 divided by 2 is 0 with a remainder of 1. So I now have a quotient of 0 here. So my binary representation starts at the bottom, and we work our way up. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Let's find the octal representation of 1, 2, 3, 4, base 10. So this time I'll repeatedly divide by 8. 1, 2, 3, 4 
divided by 8 is 154 with a remainder of 2. 154 divided by 8 is 19 with a remainder of 2. 19 divided by 8 is 2 with a remainder of 3. And then 2 divided by 8 is 0 with a remainder of 2. And so once again, we start at the bottom and work our way back up. So my actual representation, 2, 3, 2, 2. Now let's do a hexadecimal. So I'll divide repeatedly by 16. 9471 divided by 16 is 591 with a remainder of 15. 591 divided by 16 is 36 with a remainder of 15. 36 divided by 16 is 2 with a remainder of 4. And 2 divided by 16 is 0 with a remainder of 2. And once again, we work from the bottom up. So 15 corresponds to the letter F, so I have 2, 4, F, F base 16.